Kiki, I'm excited to chat with you because you have such a banger of a song out now. They say that your music is sort of pop is kind of just how it's described. And the song is new disco. But how do you describe the music that you make? I think new disco is a good a good place. Uh, everybody's talking about micro niche now. I mean, I've done indie pop. I think we're living, as you know, <laughs> through this sort of singles driven market. And in some ways it gives artists a lot of way, uh, a leeway to explore different sounds. And, um, you know, I came out with a dance uh, song last year and um, my producer, Ethan and Alan, Alan and I, he's a twice Grammy nominated um, producer. He's just incredibly creative and it's so wonderful to be in the studio with him in Silver Lake, uh, I'm in Los Angeles, California. Uh, and it is, um, we just decided, okay, we're going to keep going in that direction for a minute, but we have, I, I mean, I have four other songs in the hopper that are coming up, um, and an album that we're working on for the spring. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so it's really exciting. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, I'm kind of genre bending a little bit, <laughs> you know, I have this song, um, which I really want people to feel and be joyous and dance. And I really feel like that's a lot of what the world needs right now um, is to lighten up a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I know I certainly need to lighten up. So, um, you know, it's like, I, I think that's part of what I'm loving so much about this song at this moment is just, um, it's making me happy. Good. Who are some of the artists that influenced you when you were growing up? The Cure. <laughs> Ever since I was a, you know, a teen, um, Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac, uh, Dusty Springfield. Um, I wrote a musical on Dusty Springfield, so oh. I've spent <laughs> a lot of time with Dusty. Um, and, you know, I, I wasn't as big of a fan um, uh, until I started studying her. Uh, it ran off Broadway in New York City, ran in LA and in London. Oh, and it, you know, it took up a lot. I co-produced it. I raised the funds. I co-wrote it. I was working at University of Southern California in the screenwriting division, uh, working my ass off and um, coming home and writing monologues about Dusty Springfield and reading about Dusty Springfield and singing Dusty Springfield. So I definitely was immersed in her and I became a better musician because of it. I have to say just listening to if anybody's, you know, interested in, in the Dusty sphere. Um, she's, she's just an incredible influence. I mean, Bowie, of course, I mean, it's hard, you know, <laughs> hard not to say Bowie <laughs> and uh, the Beatles. And my mom was a huge Beatles fan. She was, you know, at, um, she was at one of their last concerts or, you know, before they stopped touring, um, you know, had the pins when I was growing And my dad was a huge Elvis fan. So he and his um, brother had this like kind of duo where they would sing Elvis together. And he kind of, my dad kind of resembles Elvis. He has this like jet black hair and light green eyes and he you know would wiggle and you know always my parents were always like they were they were funny they're funny people um and uh you know just kind of singing i grew up in you know a musical household and my grandma and my mom and you know my grandma was an irish and she was constantly playing the piano and um singing songs that we would have people over all the time lots of alcohol <laughs> <laughs> to went along with that but um you know which isn't always great but you know it, it is interesting i grew up in a really musical and a creative family and i loved the radio so when i was a kid you know obviously in the i would listen to the radio constantly so i'm sure all of that you know would seep into my consciousness as well um you know like the go-go's and of course and you know, things like uh, Duran Duran and, you know, just, um, I love, I love the eighties. I love eighties music. Um, so a lot of that is important. And I love John Lennon too, of course. Well, you have When You Over Out Now, and I mentioned what a bop it is. Where did the concept come from? 
You know, it's like, like we were talking, we were like, okay, um, I, I want to work, I kind of want to work with, I was talking with Ethan, I was like, I kind of want to work on another dance song. And I was like, oh, let's, I think I have this kind of weird idea. And then we kind of made the beats, right? And then Ethan came up with this like, I was like, oh my God, that's genius. Um, it was such a cool, right? It's like this, it's like almost a little Justin Timberlakey kind of, Tim, you know, Timball throwback. Um, Timberland, I'm sorry, I don't know why I say Timbald. Timberland, and um, and it's just like we we then just started to build the track, and we both just wanted to like just shake our booties. We're looking at Donna Summer, we're looking at you know we're watching Donna Summer videos on YouTube. Man, get get in there because that's a good one. Um, just you know, in, influenced by Giorgio Motor, her, um, is it is it Motor? I think it, that's how you say his name, Modere or something. His her producer, who's a genius. You know, he's worked with Madonna, and uh, the list goes on and on and on. I don't have it in front of me, I guess, but um, just you know, it was so it was like that. You know, listening to MacArthur Park and her singing it live, and you know, she's just a force of nature, and him like doing all the you know, Giorgio just in, these incredible synth stuff. And it was so groundbreaking for the time. And I don't think she gets a lot the credit that she's due often. But, you know, I did listen to her when I was a kid, too. Like, my parents had a lot of big vinyl collection. So I'd constantly be putting on vinyl, you know, Carol King. And, um, you know, just I would listen to a lot of vinyl records. And I think that was a huge gift. I'm so happy that that's come back as something... <laughs> Right. <laughs> that people are doing right like vinyl is so cool even though i think i've heard it's kind of toxic but i think <laughs> have you heard that too yeah. i don't know yeah it's interesting um but it, it's just cool i loved i loved listening to vinyl and i love listening to music that way um there's something very sacred about it and i think that's why it's come back because it's so tactile you can you know you're in you're sort of more in the music. You got got to put it on the record player, and you kind of just have to hang out and, you know, have a glass of wine and relax or smoke a joint or whatever, you know, just like whatever your pleasure and you know, kind of chill. And and I think we all need to chill more. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you over is a is after your song "Pretty Boys," it's the next release. What kind of fan response have you been receiving to Win You Over? Well, it just came out yesterday. Yesterday, um, I've been receiving some good. I was had like a, a feature in Ear Milk and yeah. Black News, and um, uh, you know uh, several other blogs. A great Italian blog that um, is very discerning, and <laughs> they said it was weird, but in the best way. Weird, um, and it is kind of weird, I guess. Uh, <laughs> But it was, um, you know, I've been receiving good response, which is is an amazing feeling. I'm so proud of it. And I think that's where it all starts, right? Like, I am over the moon about um, this song and this creation and just hoping that people, like, dig it. Obviously, it's going to be a lot of work on my end because uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of songs or whatever it is are being uploaded every week. But, um, you know, it's going to be that kind of, you know, I'm going to have to do a lot of TikTok videos. I'm going to have to do a lot of, like, you know, YouTube Live shorts. Shows, and, Instagram lives and so Yeah, yeah, a lot of Instagram lives and, you know, getting into that space and, like, really pushing it. Because I believe in it so much. I believe if people hear it, they're going to dance, they're going to have a good time. You know, like, I think those are the things that... Um, are so important to me. Like, I just want people to be maybe just taken out of their problems for a moment. You kind of touched on it a bit, but what is your songwriting process? Do you need to have a concept and then you can figure out the lyrics and Ethan works out the beat with you? Do you have a typical way you write your music? Uh, there's several different ways. Um, sometimes, you know, you get really lucky and it just comes to you like a gift from the heavens and you just try to get it down as fast as you can and you just try to get it out. I, I know I write a lot singing 
because that's my main instrument is my voice. Um, I'm a guitar, I could play guitar, you know, I can play a little piano, but, um, and I've studied music since I was a kid, since I was, you know, I've done voice lessons since I was eight. I majored in musical, you know, theater. I um, played viola, I played the saxophone for five years. You know, I can read music and I, I'm a musical person. Um, I'm just not a great guitar player and a great piano player. So it helps me, I mean, I'll put the thing, like, or I'll put chords in there and I can sing to that. Um, but what's such a gift is if it, it does come to you that way, I just try to get it down. Otherwise, I think it, it literally just flies out of your mind. It's right. like, it'll come and then it'll just fly out of your mind. That That's one way. Um, the other way is a little harder, right? Where you're, you know, crafting the song and, you know, you're laying down the beats first and then you're, you know, you're kind of your basic structure and then you're putting a top lining it with a melody. And then after the melody comes, maybe you add a little bit more instrumentation. And then after that, then you get some lyric ideas and, um, you know, and, and that, that, you know, is a process and takes a little longer. Uh, but also, you know, equally as fulfilling. Um, and then sometimes you just get snippets, you know, like I just get a chorus or I just get, um, you know, like just a, a hook of some sort. And then it's trying to figure out, okay, is this hook worth exploring? Right. So t sometimes I'll have like 10 ideas and then I'll, I'll sit down and be like, is this worth going forward with it? Is this worth spending more time on? Or just, you know, I have hundreds of ideas, but it's just trying to figure out like what really is worth spending a lot of time and a lot of money on, right? That's, that's kind of like the, the catch, you know? Um, you know, we're not, I'm not an AI, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I can't write songs and like, I mean, I can write songs pretty fast, but not like, you know, I'm not like, that is scary. Scary, scary. Have you tried any of those programs? No, oh thankfully. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. It's quite frightening. Um, and I just have to believe that the humans will win out <laughs> somehow in the end. I mean, I think it's a good tool, but I think also people who've never, which is, I guess, kind of cool, but who've never even studied music or done anything could just press a button and here's a song for you. Right. Um, you know, I think there's something to be said. I guess I'm old school, but for honing your craft. You know, I've been studying my craft for a long time. I warm up my voice every single day. I do scales that are boring, you know, like I like, you know, I'm constantly like, you know, you know, like having, you know, to keep my voice in shape. I've had vocal injuries that I've had to overcome that have, you know, taken a year and, you know, things like that where you have to learn to adjust your instrument. And, um, you know, I've, I just, um, yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, with the songwriting process, you're, I'm writing with Ethan or I'm writing alone. Um, or I've, you know, Ethan is the main collaborator at the moment because he's the person I've been working with for a few years now. Um, but I've worked with other people and sort of similar, you know, you bring it in, bring in the idea, and then you kind of build around it uh, either together or you bring in a whole song and then the producer will flesh out the track, that kind of thing. Well, you have this video i mean you have a single out now is there a video to come i saw that uh you have uh, a, a just you know a little teaser of the you know a, a video of a, it's not even the lyric video it's you know like a prelude video i think do you have a full video in the works at all i do i'm i'm planning on doing a full video we're looking at these like amazing dancers so ethan's uh wife zandra um she's, you know, she's a really amazing creative director. So she and I are working together on it. She has a lot, she has connections with a lot of those people, dancers, you know, um, things like that. So definitely the video will have a lot of dancing. Um, and I'm super excited about doing that. It's probably going to be a month, you know, like a month out before I release the video and I'll probably do a lyric video first. All right. So soon. Yeah. We'll have to ask the promo material and the artwork for the song. And here you are wearing these gorgeous sunglasses. Do you have a line maybe in the works yourself? Oh, that's a good idea. Um, I don't. I mean, I am an independent musician at the moment. I mean, I'm looking for 
more support and, you know, and management and a label. And we're going through that whole process right now and publishing. And, you know, I, I have like 12 songs now kind of in the hopper. And so that's a good, feels like a good number to, to, to go out to get support. Um, so, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking for that at the moment. Um, and, and I think, um, you know, I think it's like, I, I would love to put more, you know, behind this song and I'm going to do everything I can, but a lot of it is, you know, driving it on my own sure. um, at the moment. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like, I would love that. I'm just saying I don't have that. Like I love the Kiki Holly brand. Um, you know, I think it is, can do a lot of wonderful things and I hope that I get to explore you know, things that of that nature. Um, I would love that. I love to dress up. I love sunglasses. I love makeup. And, you know, I, I like those kinds of things. And so I would like to definitely explore that. Right now, I just want people to hear my music. You know? <laughs> like, oh my God, I'm like, just, I just want you to listen to the music right now. And, you know, and I think that is my main goal is just developing people who will support the music, which I think is really, and I put a lot, we put a lot into it. And, um, you know, I've, you know, a lot of it is risking so much, like risking everything, you know, just putting everything on the line in a lot of ways, because it's a very different, very different space, a different market. I need to get my TikTok game up. <laughs> I need to get my, you know, I need to get my YouTube game up. I need to get my, I just have to do more of those things. And I think marketing manager in your spare time too, right? You have to do I know. As an independent artist. You do. You have to wear a lot of hats and I'm used to that. I, and, and I understand that, but it's, you know, it would be nice to have a little, more support so I'm that's what I'm leaning towards right now and that's why I took a big break to be honest like in between these singles and I know everybody wants you on the treadmill four to six weeks and you gotta release a single every four to six weeks <laughs> and you gotta do this and you gotta do that <laughs> and you gotta check your you know check and check and check your boxes um but I needed some time to I need some time to kind of figure out how I'm going to support myself financially and my mental health and, um, you know, going through this because you are doing, you know, most of it, you're pushing, you're pushing the, you know, pushing everything yourself and, um, which is wonderful in some ways, um, and uh, not so wonderful in others. Sure. You know. <laughs> Who would you love to collaborate with on a song in the future? Robert Smith. We could get him to sing more often. That would be amazing. I haven't seen him perform live in ages. I mean, I don't think that's ever going to happen. But oh my god, I just saw him. He has been touring. Oh, so yeah. I just, oh yeah, I saw him at the Hollywood Bowl. Um, I saw him uh, twice at the Hollywood Bowl. I mean, he is girl. You have to go. <laughs> you have to go to YouTube. I am telling you, he is just as brilliant as he's ever been. And I literally, um, I was talking with another person about this um, in a podcast, but, you know, I didn't think I was going to be able to go to the concert. And <laughs> we, we won like $400 in the lottery. And I'm not even joking the same day that the concert was. And I was like, I'm going to stand in line and get tickets because it was sold out because they were doing that whole, he was doing that whole only selling to fans things. And um, uh, so I, I mean, look, I am a very different style than Robert Smith at the moment, but he just, you know, he just, he makes me, I, I he's just brilliant. Brian Ferry. I mean, my God, I would, you know, from Roxy music, if anybody doesn't know. Yeah. I mean, I would just like be over the moon to do some sort of collaboration. I mean, really, I am open. <laughs> I am open to collaboration with, with really, you know, there's incredible artists out there right now. Um, so, you know, I am, I am open. Um, you know, of course I'm like, it's like saying that, you know, Tim Burton is going to direct your movie saying that you want to do it with, right, with right. Robert Smith or like, you know, or, 
or Brian Ferry, but uh, you know, I don't know. Anything is possible, I guess. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. He doesn't seem like he would be into me, maybe, but I have, you know, Robert, if you're listening. (laughs) We have the same last name. I'm Kirsten Holly Smith. Kiki Holly is my music name. And I'm like, well, maybe that maybe that's means something. I don't know. I just, you know, I just think he's an incredible (laughs) artist. Um, and I'm so influenced by his work and you know they have a new album out and it's just um you know he's just brilliant well what would you like to say then to everyone who are fans and supporter of kiki holly and the beautiful music you make thank you yeah really simply thank you and please if you like the music just to share it or mention it to a friend or you know um yeah, and I just hope you dance your ass off to the song. <laughs>